How you doing? This is John Zimmerman with tabletclass.com here to give you a little bit of uh, information or guidance, if you will, on scatter plots. Okay, so uh, generally taught, oh, I don't know, let's say uh, sixth grade, seventh, eighth grade, and around there. It's also, um, you also may know this as like the best fitting line. Okay, so best fitting line, scatter plot, this is what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to go over a quick example um, just to kind of hopefully. Uh, illustrate the main concept behind the scatter plot and some of the terminology that goes along with it and hopefully you'll find this of value if you're studying scatter plots. Okay so here I have a um, kind of like an XY axis set up okay and on my X axis I have age all right and my Y axis I have height and what I'm doing is I'm just kind of let's suppose I'm just collecting information kind of on let's say a hundred different people okay starting from you know infants all the way up to teenagers and what I'm doing is getting their age and I'm correlating it uh, with their height and let's say inches okay so you know for most people as you get older you're going to be growing okay some of you might you know uh, no counter examples somebody you know is just can't grow no matter what then they have this huge uh, um, you know, growth spurt, but nevertheless, generally speaking, um, in our, you know, human beings, as you get older, up to a certain age, you're going to be, you know, taller, all right? So what we want to do is we'd like to plot, we like to use graphs, if you will, to uh, be able to plot this kind of data, okay? And what we're looking for is trends, okay? So scatter plots, the whole, va the whole value, or the whole idea behind scatter plots is to be able to um, plot data and kind of look for correlations and that's one of these words that we use in scatter plots. So let's go ahead and just make up some um, quick examples. So let's say uh, we, we know somebody who's one year, you know, one years old, 20 inches. Okay, they're 20 inches, uh, let's see, a five-year-old person, maybe, oh, I don't know, like say 40 inches, 10-year-old, maybe they measured in here like around 59 inches. 12 years old, maybe they're a little bit taller, okay? Somewhere, oh, I don't know, say 70 inches, that's pretty tall. But let's say that was the case, okay? Actually, 70 inches, yeah, that's pretty, yeah, I guess that's a little bit taller than average. But nevertheless, you can see what's going on here is as we plot these um, points, we can see a trend, okay? The trend is that as we get older, okay, we get taller, right? And that's the whole idea is to be able to take a bunch of numbers and to be able to plot them and then see what's going on, right? So that's the whole idea behind scatter plot. Now, there is something else called the best fitting line. And what that means is, as you plot a bunch of pieces of information, let's, let's suppose in this manner, okay? And your data look like this, okay? What you wanna do is to find the best fitting line. And this is just kind of like an eyeball thing. It's like, okay, if I was to draw a line, one line that kind of generally represented what's going on here, maybe my line would be like this right here, right? Okay, that would be like my best fitting line. Now you might have drawn your line a little bit differently, but it doesn't make a difference. I think you kind of get the point what I'm trying to do. Now, what what you're asked to do, in, um, in especially in algebra classes, is to find the best fitting line. So let's say you're in sixth grade and you know you're all you've studied is just the basic idea behind scatter plots. This might not pertain to uh, your math course, but let's say you're in algebra one, algebra two, whatever, you know, you might be able to may be asked to find the actual an actual equation to represent what's going on here. So that would be like in y equals mx plus b form. So you'd have to take two of these points here, okay, pick pick two points that best represent what's going on, okay, o only two, so that best represent, if you connected the two, or drew a line through the two um, points, you know, would kind of represent the best fitting line, all right, to you. Now, your line might be a little bit different than mine, but they're going to be fairly close. So, let's suppose I pick this point and this point right here, okay, so here, this would be 120, okay, like x, y, right, or we don't have x, we have age, and we don't have y, we have height. So this would be like 120, I would use that point, 
then I would use maybe this point right here, 5, and let's say, let's call that 40. 5, 40. All right, I would use these two points to come up with a slope. All right, and then I would go through all the steps to find the equation of a line. Okay, and uh, for those of you who know how to do that, this should make some sense. Listen, um, I don't want to fry your brain here and, t and just like just do a big overloading of information. But I'm just generally speaking, depending on where you're at in your um, math studies, you know, things that you're going to ask or tasks you're going to be asked about scatter plots and best fitting line. Now, let me talk about one last thing. There's something called correlation. Okay, correlation, or you might say, what kind of correlation does a scatter plot have? If you have like your data is like this, actually, let me get something. Your data is like plotting this way. What's going on is your your data is kind of forming a line that has a positive slope. Remember lines that go from left to right, that increase from left to right, are lines that have a positive slope. So this kind of representation here would represent a positive correlation. Okay. Likewise, if you had something that kind of like you plotted the, the trend this way, that would have a negative correlation. So this word correlation is used a lot when we talk about scatter plots. Now, what if you plotted something and it looked like this? Okay, oh boy, let me do it this way. Maybe it looked like, I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm kind of rushing. What if you did something and you're saying, okay, what's the trend here? You'd be like, uh, there is no trend, or I have no idea. You know, it looks like one of those uh, tests that psychologists <laughs> show people and say, what do you see here? You know, well, I see this. You know, <laughs> you have no idea what's going on. This is called no correlation. Okay, so you have positive correlation, you have negative correlation, and then you have no correlation. All right. So if you need more help with scatter plots and the like, tabletclass.com. And by the way, um, we like comments and feedback on our videos. Hopefully we're helping you clear and understandable math. We explain it in a way that you'll actually get it. Okay, we have a 30-day free trial. So thanks a lot for watching this video. Hopefully you got something out of it. And if your brain is smoking, uh, we certainly apologize. But look at it this way. You're going to pass your test, you know, um, go off to one of those fancy colleges and make a billion dollars. All right, have a great day.